Good morning, kindergarten. My name is Mrs. Oxford, and I'm very excited to be a part of your chapel this morning. Let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes, and let's pray to begin. Dear Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a school where we get to come together and to learn about you, Lord, um, to hear stories from your word and have an opportunity to pray together. Lord, I pray that you would help me to teach the lesson this morning, that it would be profitable for each and every one that hears it. And I pray that you would give each of them a good day at school. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so every morning when you get ready for school, there are a few things that you might think that you need or things that you need to do. So I brought a couple of those things that I use in the morning to get ready. I have my hairbrush to make sure that my hair is all brushed out, nice and ready to go. I have my toothbrush and my toothpaste because I want my teeth to be sparkly and my breath to smell minty fresh. I'm sure that we are all familiar with having our masks so that we can come into school ready to have a good day. I have my socks and my shoes. All these things are things that I use to prepare for my morning, to prepare for my day. But there's a couple other things that you need when you're preparing for your day that you need to prepare your heart. So I have two sides. There's a couple things that we need to do to prepare our hearts for the day. So when you're getting ready in the morning, do you usually think, I need to make sure that I prepare my heart for the day ahead? I know sometimes we might forget. We may remember to brush our hair. We might remember our socks and shoes. It would be hard to get very far without them. But I think sometimes we don't get our hearts ready to come to school in the morning. And today I'm gonna to teach us about preparing our hearts to come to school and to each and every day live our lives, not just for school, but for every day live our lives. <clears throat> so there are two pieces to this puzzle. And the first piece of the puzzle, I'm going to take a story out of the book of Acts, which I've been studying out of. And on our heart here, this first part that I'm gonna talk about is prayer. I'm going to talk about the peace of prayer. So I've been reading in the book of Acts, and I've been reading about uh, Peter and John, the apostles, and the special job that God had given them to tell the world about Jesus Christ. And it wasn't always easy, because there were the high priests and the Sadducees and those that did not want them to teach in the name of Jesus. In fact, they had already at one point taken Peter and John and had put them into custody and had questioned them and said, do not teach or preach in the name of Jesus. But they knew who they should obey and who they should listen to. But because it was not always going to be easy, they needed to prepare their hearts and they needed to prepare their hearts with prayer. So let's read out of the book of Acts where we see them prepare their hearts with prayer. We're going to read in 4.23, and it says, And being let go, that was when they had been captured and told not to teach, they went into their own company, so they went to the other believers, and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said unto them. They went and told them how they had been told not to teach about Jesus again. And when they had heard that, all the people, all the believers had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, and they were praying in prayer and said, Lord, thou art God, which hast made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. And we jump down to verse 29. It says, and now, Lord... Behold their threatenings, they prayed, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak 
the word. So they knew that there was going to be difficult, that it wasn't always going to be easy, then they needed to prepare their hearts to be ready for what might happen. And there was something that happened. So they continued to preach and teach like Jesus had told them to do. And there were those people that weren't happy to hear about it. Those Sadducees and the high priests, they heard about Peter and John and the other apostles preaching the word of God, even though they had told them not to. And in verse 17 of chapter 5, it says, Then the high priest rose up, and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. They were upset. How could they still be teaching and preaching when we had told them not to? And it says, And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They snatched them up and put them in jail for doing what they were supposed to be doing. But God had a plan, and it says the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and the angel, the angel came and got them out of prison, and he brought them forth, got them out, and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. They got in trouble for preaching, and they got put in jail, and the angel came and let them out and said, I want you to go right back to preaching and teaching the word. That would take a lot of preparation of the heart. I might have been a little bit scared to go back because I had known I had just been arrested for doing such a thing. But the Bible says that they were ready. It says, and when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. They were prepared in their heart with prayer. They had prayed for boldness and they had prayed for God's help. And when the time came, God helped them and gave them the ability to be bold and do what they knew what was right. Now there's another story. There's another picture over here. It's another half. We're gonna go to the story of Daniel. This side, I have three little children and they're reading God's word. The other half to preparing your heart for your day is to read your Bible and hide God's word in your heart to memorize verses, which I know many of you have done a very good job doing at school. So we're gonna flip back over to Daniel just to read one verse. Let's see if I can find my magnet. <clears throat> In Daniel chapter 1, in verse 8, the Bible said, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor the wine which he drank. So Daniel prepared his heart. He purposed in his heart to do what was right. And to know what was right to do, he had to know God's word. He had to know what God said was right and what was wrong. God had given the the Jewish people rules about what they could eat or what they could drink and the king's meat and the king's drink was not allowed by God. But Daniel had been taken away from his home and taken away from his people and brought to this king's palace and they were going to give him this meat and this drink and he had a choice to make. He had to decide what he was going to do. Was he going to listen to God? Was he going to obey God's word and do what he should? Or would he do what was easy and just eat the meat and the drink that was given to him? Daniel chose before he even got there. He purposed in his heart. He decided he was going to do what was right before God. And he knew what was right before God because he knew the word of God and he had the word of God hidden in his heart. His heart was prepared for the challenges that come ahead. So when you get ready in the morning and you're brushing your teeth and you're getting your hair brushed and ready, when you're finding your 
your mask and your socks and your shoes and you're getting everything ready for the morning, don't forget to prepare your heart. To pray, ask for God to help you to have a good day. Purpose to do what is right, to listen and obey. Sometimes we may make mistakes and we may fall short, but God will forgive us of our mistakes and we should always purpose to do our very best. Even if we make a mistake, we decide, we purpose in our heart that we're going to do even better the next time. And God will help us with that. Now, there's a very important part to preparing your heart for each and every day. And that is for you to ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to save you from your sins. We all have a sin nature. The sin is the all the bad things we think, we say, or we do. And that separates us from a home in heaven with Jesus Christ. And we need to ask him to forgive us of our sins because he already paid the cost for that on the cross. He, what, he died, he was buried, he rose again so that you and I could go to heaven. And all we need to do is to ask him. Our heart is never going to be prepared until we ask Jesus Christ to come and live in our hearts to help us each and every day to be prepared for the day ahead. <clears throat> so remember, you need to know your Bible, hide God's word in your heart, and be prepared with prayer each and every morning when you're brushing your teeth, when you're doing your hair, Prepare your heart also to have a good day at school. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to close in prayer. Close, bow your head and close your eyes. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this morning. And I thank you for this opportunity to teach chapel, to uh, share what you had shown me out of the book of Acts <clears throat> and share what you've shown me um, out of the book of Daniel and things uh, uh, regarding preparing our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be diligent to do that every morning, that we would hide your word in our hearts, that we would pray and prepare ourselves for the day ahead. Lord, I pray that you be with each and every student today. Help them to have a good day. Help them to um, one day accept you as their Lord and Savior, Lord, that they could um, <clears throat> find a home in heaven with you there. And I pray that you would just bless uh, the rest of uh, this morning for them and the rest of their time at school today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat>